Hi everyone, Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes here and today we will focus on creating the cinematic look in Capture One. Okay, let's get started. So we will be working today with this image and I've decided to go for the cinematic look, especially because I want to focus obviously on the subjects. We have plenty of beautiful skin tones and the cinematic look is based on very strong color contrast, is based on color contrast between the orange and teal. So if we target the skin tones as our basic color and if we pick second complementary color for the teal, for the skin tones, we will get a very beautiful color contrast and we will emphasize the skin tones in the image. So as you can see this worked quite well. Let's take a look at the original image. So this is the image that I have started with. So let's just drag this to the right. This is the original image before applying any adjustments and this is the final outcome. I have applied a little bit of luminosity adjustments. I have worked a bit with dodging and burning and finally I was working with color grading. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to switch this off and let's move over to our original image. I just want to very quickly show you my initial adjustment. So this is the original photo. Firstly, I have applied a little bit of healing. I have removed a little bit of these distracting elements here, here beside the model. So this is my heal layer. Next, I have applied quite strong contrast with curves. So if I pull out my curve, you can see that I went quite strongly for quite a strong contrast. This is my RGB curve and I have brightened the image with the Luma curve. You might ask why I have achieved such a strong saturation. So as I've mentioned at the very beginning, I want to focus on skin tones and I don't mind at all adding saturation to the skin tones at this point because I can fine tune it later. So if you take a look at the histogram, you can see that with this curve, I have managed to extend the histogram. So this is before. You can see that I'm missing information here. I don't have highlights in the image. So I have pushed the curve and I have made this histogram. I've stretched it. So with the next layer, with the HDR layer, I have lifted shadows so the image is a little bit brighter and the issue that I got here when I dropped this control point to get much more saturated skin tones and to get more dynamic look, I was able to very easily fix this with the HDR tool. Here I have just lifted shadows with the shadow here. So this is before and this is the after. So next I have applied a little bit of dodging and burning and I have worked a little bit on the dress to make it a little bit stronger. So at this stage I have set my luminosity and contrast adjustments and now I'm ready to work on the cinematic look. So with the cinematic look, we will be going after color contrast and we will take the skin tone as our base color. If you want to support yourself with the Adobe Color Wheel, you can take color readouts from your skin tone. So if you hover over with your mouse over the skin tones, you can take the color readouts for the red, green, blue and for the luminosity. And then if you move over, let's jump to the Adobe Color Wheel, you can type in these values here. So you have the value for the red, green and blue and here you have the value for the brightness. That way you will set the basic color. So this will be your skin tone. This will be your basic color to which you will have all your other colors adjusted. So with the Adobe Color Wheel you can experiment. I have selected already complementary color harmony. You can try other color harmonies. You can go with triad, monochromatic, analogous. Today we will be focusing on complementary color harmony and here with this color wheel you can very quickly check that the complementary color to our 
orange to our skin tones is this sort of bluish teal shade. If we jump over to Capture One, you can see that if we move over to Color Editor, so let's first create a new layer where we'll be working on color. So I'm adding new field adjustment layer and I'm going to rename it to Color Grading. Okay, so let's move over to the Color tab and we will start working on color grading this image with Color Balance Tool. So let's just scroll down, here it is, let's just pull it out, we can put our curve back. Okay, so if we take the master tool, you can see that this color wheel, this is exactly the same color wheel as we had here in Adobe Color Wheel. So it starts with yellows and goes to oranges, reds, blues, cyans, greens and goes back to yellows. So exactly the same color wheel we have visible here in Capture One. The reason why I have started with the color balance tool is that this tool is super easy to use and super intuitive. So typically I would go for the color balance tool to set my color palette and then I will use the advanced color editor to fine tune my look. So when it comes to manipulating colors with the color balance tool, I will be trying to shift colors that are present in the image in a way that will match the color scheme that we got here. So I will try to sort of shift my colors that they will be pushed either towards yellowish, orangey tones or blues. So let's jump back to Capture One. So first of all, in the master channel, I want to go for warmer look. So I will push it towards this yellowy orangey color. So something around here. With this slider, you can control saturation. So I can go for very, very saturated look. This is too much. This is causing too much color shift. So I will go for something around here. Let's now move over to the shadows. So here to contrast my warm mid-tones, I'm going to inject a little bit of blues to the shadows to make them cooler and to make them pop out nicely. So this is my shadows. Let's now move over to mid-tones. Here I can add just a touch of orange. I'm already happy with the color I have achieved. And when it comes to highlights, I can add a little bit of warmish color, but nothing really intense. So something like this, let's fine tune it with this handle here. Let's jump back to the shadows and here I want to show you that you can actually lift the selected luminosity range. So in the shadow, mid-tone and highlights you can work with color, so you can add selected color to your image, you can inject selected color into specific luminosity range, but you can affect the luminosity range as well. So for example, I feel that the shadows are a little bit too heavy. So in the shadows tab, I can actually lift the shadows by pulling this handle upwards and that way I'm getting this a little bit softer matte effect. This is maybe a little bit too much, so let's pull it down, something like this. So this is our image before working with Color Balance Tool and this is the image after. So that way I have set the base and now I'm going to move for more precise color grading tool. It's not always necessary, but here I want to specifically target those reds and magentas that I have here in her skin tones. I want the skin tones to be more unified and more subtle, on a more silverish side, if you will. So let's move over to our color editor. Let's pull it out and let's maybe get rid of this one so we can focus on this one. So first of all, we need to sample those colors in the image that we want to affect. Let's hide the browser. So I'm going to sample first in the reds. So let's sample around here. Next, I'm going to include the whole saturation range. So I'm going to quickly hit on this little icon. And first of all, I want to push this color towards more orangey side. So here is my little control point and I want to go towards those more yellowish tones. So I'm going to 
work with the hue slider and push it towards the right hand side. So that way I will be going towards orangey colors. If I go further, I will be going towards yellows because I'm going upwards here if we are looking inside the color wheel and we are going towards the right. If I would push my handle towards the left, I will be going inside the color wheel towards the magenta. So this is really very simple, very intuitive way of working with color. All you need to do is to just practice a bit and adjusting these colors will get really, really easy with time. So I'm going to go for a value maybe around here. As a next step, I want to focus on saturation. So this is way too strong. I want to get my focus on skin tones. And so now the hair just stands out a little bit too much. So I want to push saturation towards the left hand side and desaturate the selected color. If you want to have a preview of selected color range, you can use this little button here. So we can see that everything that is not grayed out is being affected while we are manipulating with this color sample. So you need to be careful, don't go too far, don't desaturate this too much because we will be losing our nice skin tones. And as the last step, I will be focusing on luminosity and I feel I can push the slider a little bit towards the left just to make them slightly darker, not much something about this. So let's see before adjusting the reds and after. So I'm already very happy with the result I have achieved. The image is getting much more harmonious. It's not dominated anymore by this strong red color. So as a next step, I want to focus on the complementary color. So we have started with the skin tones, we have our oranges, and now I want to add a little bit of bluish color, a little bit of teal. So let's quickly jump back to our Adobe color wheel. So we have focused on those tones for the moment, and now I will try to shift colors in the image towards the blue. So let's jump back. And I want to maybe focus on these doors. So if I sample somewhere around here, let's make sure the whole saturation range is included in our selection. And first of all, I want to make this color more saturated. I'm not sure if I will be manipulating with the hue. So this is way too much. Something maybe around 20 or 15. I think this is already enough because when I'm manipulating with this value, it is affecting the tattoo, the butterfly. I don't want to go too strongly with this color. So something around 16 and I will make this color darker as well. So as you can see now, by making the blue more prominent, we are creating stronger color contrast and these nice orange skin tones are much stronger and the image gets much more three-dimensional and much more appealing. So this is our blues. I can try to manipulate with the hue, but actually I'm happy with the color that we have right now. So maybe I will just add a little bit more saturation, nothing crazy. And I think that now I will just remove this from the butterfly because it's bothering me a bit. So I have made the color sample. Okay, let's just push the image upwards and let's hit E to get the eraser and let's go down with the flow a bit. The size is too much. Let's just remove the mask from the butterfly. If we hit M, we will have the preview of the mask. So the tattoo is not affected with our color editor. And what I mean is it's not getting more saturated. Okay, it's looking much better now. Okay, and as the very last step, I feel that the image is a little bit too much on the yellowish side. So I'm going to get back to my advanced color editor and I'm going to sample maybe somewhere around here in the dress. So I will be working with the yellow color. And here I need to be very careful because if I take a preview of the selected color range, I will see that all my skin tones are included and the wall as well in the background. So I just want to push it a notch towards the left. I'm talking about saturation, so I want to make it a little bit less saturated. So I have highlighted the number and I will be working with arrows on my keyboard. 
So now I can see the before and after. Okay, and I can make it a little bit darker as well. If you want to be very precise, you can create a mask, but I feel that with these adjustments, it works quite well. So I can make this a little bit darker, so the skin tones will be getting a little bit more dramatic and I got rid of the yellow color. So this is before and this is the after. Okay, so now we can get rid of our color editor and as the very last step I would add a little bit of clarity to the image overall. So let's move over to the exposure tab and here at the very bottom we have clarity. I'm going to go for a little bit, nothing crazy, maybe around five or six and to get the structure of the dress a little bit more visible. We don't need to worry here about the skin of the model because we don't see the girl's face and with the men it's typically not a problem to add a little bit of structure, a little bit of clarity. So I can go for something around maybe 10. Okay, and to finish up our image, let's move over to the details tab and let's apply a little bit of sharpening. Remember to have your image at least at 100%. If you are on a retina display as I am at the moment, it is helpful to go for 200%. So we can add a little bit more sharpening. However, the image was taken in a quite dark space, so we can go for a little bit of noise reduction or maybe we will just add a bit of film grain. So I'm going to go for silver ridge and just to unify the texture to add the final touch. I'm going to add a little bit of the film look. So this is the film grain simulation and let's add a little bit more of sharpening. So something like this should work really well. Okay, so this is my final edit, starting with this raw file. Initially, I have applied basic luminosity and contrast adjustments. Next, I have moved over to the color balance tool to set the stage for color grading to create the basic color shifts. And finally, I have worked with the advanced color editor to target specific colors. So that's my personal take on creating cinematic look in Capture One. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments area. This was Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes. Thanks for watching and see you by now.